That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. The door, it keeps rattling at me. That door? That one. The one that's wired shut. It rattles like something's trying to get through from the other side. Do you have any idea how weird that sounds? Very weird? Very weird. Most of us look forward to the anniversaries in our lives, don't we? Sometimes we celebrate an anniversary together, such as the birth of our nation on the 4th of July. Other times, it's our own private anniversary, an event that we share with only a few close friends, like the anniversary at the heart of the story. I was celebrating my third year as a kitten at that well-known night spot, the Kitten Club. We kittens are just young waitresses dressed in a sort of bathing suit costume, wearing kitten ears and a tail. Well, anyway, my friends Debbie and Mary and I arranged to take the early shift together on the night of my third anniversary at the club. After work, the three of us were going to combine celebrating the big day with a weekend of house-sitting for some friends of mine who were on vacation. But before the first night of that weekend was over, each of us was going to wish that we stayed home. Each of us would wish that we had done anything rather than take part in that foolish little anniversary celebration that turned into a nightmare. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Anniversary, by Patricia Joyce. Our stars, Joan McCall, Denise Gaelic, and Miss Joyce as Debbie Driver. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. <laughs> Start at the beginning. And the beginning was the night Debbie and Mary and I left the kitten club together and drove out of the city to house it for my friends the living. It was a cloudy night, and driving down the dark canyon road that led to the house, I was a little uncertain of my bearings. Debbie was beside me in the front seat, and Mary was curled up in the back. Debbie thinks of herself as a voluptuous blonde, but there are those at the kitten club who say she's fat. She also chews gum and hums disco tunes. Mary is small and dark and very quiet compared to Debbie and me. Athena, what? Are you lost? Never. Don't be snide. Sorry, Debbie. I'm still mad about that walk out at the club tonight. Are they really going to make you pay for him? I hope not. How much was the check? Twenty-something. I'm sorry I brought it up. Let's not think about it. It's my anniversary. <laughs> How are you doing back there, Mary? Fine. Are you sure we're not lost? It's just around the next bend. You'll see the lights then. Nobody seems to live around here. There are about a half a dozen houses up near the Livingston's. Oh. <laughs> are you sure the Livingston's won't mind me and Mary? Of course not. <laughs> they thought the idea of an old-time pajama party was cute. Donna said she would have joined us if they hadn't gone to Tahiti. She even bought fixings for hot fudge Sundays as a little anniversary present. Nice friend. Yeah, she's great. Did you ever house it for them before? Once. It's really easy. All I have to do is look after their cats and plants. It's really pretty around here, Athena. Wait till you see this house, Mary. You'll just die. It's so gorgeous. You know, it's so still up here... I really feel in tune with the mystic sense of all being permeating nature in its raw and regal state. What book did you get that out of? The Natural Cosmos and Flower by B.S. Lloyd. Figures. This is it. Oh, you said it, Athena. This is it. This. It's a nice house, huh? <laughs> nice. It's the blind beginning to yangling superbly. Do they have a pool? Out that, Mary. It's too cold to go swimming. I just like to look at the water. Let's go in. I'll make us all hot fudge sundaes. Opera stars say ice cream ruins the vocal cords. Big deal. I'm starving. You wouldn't say that to Beverly Stills. 
Did you forget the key, Athena? If you did, it's I'm... right here. Hey, the inside is great. Wait until you see the upstairs. I just want to see the refrigerator. I thought you were worried about your vocal cords. If I can't sing, I may as well eat. Oh, I think I've reached Nirvana. Why? Look in this refrigerator. Salami, cheese, cold cuts, lettuce. Lettuce? Oh, well, you can't win them all. Caviar, jumbo shrimp. Gee, Willikers, where's the ice cream? In the freezer. Oh, right. I'll get it if you get the plate. Athena? What, Mary? I don't know if I should have any ice cream. Why not? Harold says it will ruin my enamel, and he'll have to give me crown. Oh, Mary, are you still engaged to that dull dentist? I love him. Dentists are boring. Cut it out, you two. Oh, look, Mary, have a Sunday and just don't tell Harold. I couldn't lie, and I know he'll ask. Then have a small one. Jiminy, what was that? Samson? Cut it out! What was that? Oh, it's the cat, Samson. <laughs> he likes to roll things around. Sounded more like Arnold Schwarzenegger lifting weights than a cat rolling things around. Mm, he's a strong cat. <laughs> Is Samson a fat Siamese with no tail? Yeah. He's right there in the dining room. I was looking at him before. Uh, then it must have been the house settling. Oh, Athena, that's dumb. Maybe it was a little earth tremor. Who wants nuts on her Sunday? <laughs> We uh, watch the late show. I hear it's really scary. <laughs> um, are uh, you guys? What? Oh, uh, I'm really tired, Jack. Uh, can I go to bed? Uh, you won't be mad at me, Athena? No, no. Remember, I have to sleep with all the windows open. Do you want to sleep in the guest room, Mary? And uh, then Debbie and I'll sleep in the master bedroom. Sure, okay. Okay, Mary. Here's a towel and a washcloth. Uh, there's soap and toothpaste in the bathroom. Can you think of anything else you might need? Hey, Athena, how come this door is wired shut? I don't know. What's it lead to? The attic. The wire is really tacky looking, Athena. Let's take it off. No, Debbie, uh, I think you better leave it on. Why? Well, the maid, Angela, she's from Mexico. And she's really nice, but uh, she doesn't speak any English. Anyway, uh, when she was here on Wednesday, she came downstairs looking really upset. I thought maybe the vacuum cleaner broke or something. She took my hand and led me up to this room and... Uh, pointed at the door and pointed at the wire. She was telling me something, but I only speak French, so I didn't understand her. After I said, no comprendo, about 14 times, she said, no, no. She pointed at the wire and said, stay very bad. Anyway, are you sure you don't want to watch the late show with us? No, uh, I'll stay up here. It's a real good one. Been some prizes in it. No, uh, scary movies make me sick of my stomach. Sometimes I even get asthma. No kidding. I guess I'll go brush my teeth. Uh, come on down if you change your mind. Debbie and I sat in front of the TV set watching the late night horror movie. The Livingston cat was purring on my lap. And Debbie was devouring her third hot fudge sundae with great concentration. Upstairs, Mary was sleeping alone. It seemed like an innocent beginning to a bachelor girl's evening. But what was that rattling we had heard earlier? Why did Angela, the maid, feel compelled to wire shut the upstairs door to the attic? And what of Mary's asthma attacks, which occur whenever she gets frightened? trying to scare me. Now cut it out. Okay. It was a good, funny joke. Now cut it out. Athena? Debbie? Stop it. Okay? I I'm scared. You did it. You scared me. 
Okay. Athena? Debbie? Athena? Debbie? Oh, you guys. Where are you? Where are you? Stop it. Okay. Where are you? Athena? Debbie? You guys, please. Oh, well, um, hey, you guys, Athena. Yeah, Harry, Athena. Uh, I have to talk to you. Okay, talk. I mean, face to face. Well, come on down. Will you turn off the television, please? I don't want to get scared. We're not going to turn off TV. It's a free country. Oh, Debbie, they're going to a commercial. Turn it off. Come on down, Mary. Hi. Make it quick. They're just getting to the good part. Were you trying to scare me? When? Just now. When Debbie didn't want to turn off the set? No, before. Oh, Mary, why would we want to do that? I don't know. What's up? Nothing. Nothing. Well, you're making a big fuss over nothing. It's not exactly nothing. I thought I heard that funny noise again, but the cat's still down here. Maybe it was the TV. Oh, yeah, right. Can we turn it back on? As soon as I go, I get scared. Look, Mary, fear is a bottomless pit into which the soul can tumble, crumble, and wallow, if you know what I mean. Not really. I guess it's just a profound way of saying that the emotion of fear is meaningless when viewed in your overall relation to the cosmos. Oh, <laughs> in other words, don't be scared. We're right here. Oh, um, right. <laughs> okay. Well, good night. Sorry again. No problem, Mary. Now can we turn on TV? <laughs> that you read about. And then suddenly, it actually happened to you. Was there indeed a presence lurking behind the door to the attic? Debbie and I watched Mary as she stared, wide-eyed, at the door. I saw it rattling. I really did. Maybe it was just the wind, Mary. No, no. It wasn't the wind. There was a force to it, like something was back there. Uh Uh-huh, sure there was. I saw it. Well, that's just great. What do you want us to do? I don't know, Debbie. 
Oh, do you want to sleep in the master bedroom with me and Debbie? The couch folds out into a bed. No, because I need the windows open and you'll freeze. I'll stay here, I guess. Well, the movie's over and we're going to sleep. We'll be next door, so you'll hear the noise, too, if there's a problem. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night, Mary. Athena? Mm-hmm? Have you noticed this before? Yeah. That Mary's a little neurotic? A little neurotic? What am I saying? Mary is seriously unbalanced, out of touch, space city. Oh, now, Debbie, everybody has idiosyncrasies. All I've got to say is that it's lucky she's marrying a dentist. Let's drop it. Where do you want to sleep? Over here. Ah! Good grief! Come on! Oh. Ah. Mary, what happened? Look, what? Mary, I thought I told you how to open this door. Just it open itself. Do you think of what I tell you? Mary, what are you talking about? He doesn't know. Oh, shut up, Debbie. What, Mary? It sprang open. It rattled. Then it just sprang open. Mary. Mary, look at me. I saw it open. Mary, answer me the truth now. I saw it open. Mary, look at me. What? Are you on anything? Uh, some drugs, painkillers. Did, did you drink at the club tonight? No. Could anyone have slipped you something? I don't know. I don't think so. Mary, you could have opened that door. I couldn't snap that thick wire in two. No, that's right. You probably couldn't. If she were a paranoid schizophrenic, she could. They're stronger than normal people. Can't yeah. Mary, I think you better sleep in our room. What if it comes after me? Now I've heard everything. It won't come after you, Mary. You'll be safe with us. <laughs> what in the hell is that? It sure wasn't Samson the cat. Daddy, did you turn off the TV? You saw me. That's right. Oh, brother. Now do you believe me? Athena, what do you think that was? Um... A burglar, maybe? A laughing burglar. I'm telling you, it was a thing behind the door. What if the living thing to have a crazy person in the attic like Mr. Rochester did in Jane Eyre? Huh? You know, a mad relative in the attic? What are we going to do now? We're going to calm down, make up that extra bed for Mary, and forget that this happened. You both feel a lot better now that we're here, tucked into these nice, cozy beds. <laughs> these nice, warm, electric blankets. <laughs> Do you think that we just imagined it? No way. Hey, Athena, maybe your friend Donna hired somebody to come and scare us. You know, like you hire somebody to do a singing telegram. Why would she do a thing like that? Oh, a joke, maybe. What's a pajama party without a good scare? Some joke. I'm probably going to have an asthma attack any second. Well, if you do, Mary, it's your own fault. As Christmas series singer says, asthma is an illusion. Sure, it's an illusion to him. He's probably never had it. He doesn't need to have it. He's a very holy guy. He wants to live for six months on a diet of rope and lichens. That's disgusting. That's worse than raising white mice. Well, you two, stop the tree. Now, let's quiet down and say, Good night. No, we can't do that. Why not? Because if you say good night, you'll go to sleep, and if you go to sleep, that thing will come after me. Well, that laugh was pretty weird. If it wasn't a joke, then I don't know. I just don't think we should go to sleep. What should we do? I know. A hundred bottles of beer on the wall. A hundred bottles of beer. If one of those bottles should happen to fall, ninety-nine bottles of beer on the wall. And ninety-nine bottles of beer on the wall. And ninety-nine what bottles of beer. Are you doing and seeing? Why? So we'll all stay awake. Oh, Debbie, don't. It'll hear you and come get us. <laughs> See, Debbie, I told you it would hear you. It sounded like it was in the hall, right near our door. Uh-oh. Please don't open that door. Not a chance. And don't sing. Well, I couldn't if I wanted to. My throat gets constricted when I'm nervous. Quiet. Do you hear anything? No. I still feel a presence outside that door. Yeah, I do. Uh-oh. Now what? I wish I'd stayed at the club tonight. 
You've been putting up with that dippy Betty Sue who flirts with all their customers is better than this. Don't say that. It's Athena's anniversary. Athena, did you remember to lock the door of this room? It doesn't have a lock. Oh. Shouldn't we put a chair in front of it or something? I think we should stay right here and be as quiet as possible. What was that? Oh, no! Sounds like that was coming from the attic. What did I tell you? There's somebody here besides us. All right. Or something. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Just a feeling I have. Something about the way it rattles the attic door. What? Something unearthly. Oh, evil. I really don't know. It was just a feeling. Mary, uh, listen. Uh, an unearthly thing couldn't break open that closet door. Sure it could. I was reading Strange Haunts of the Cornish Coastline, and there was this ghost of young Annie Tregivner who ran around opening doors to chicken coops and letting chickens escape to roam the countryside. Oh, that's a lot of bull. Debbie, does the book tell how they got rid of the ghost? She's still roaming with the chickens to this day. Oh, come back to Earth, you two. <laughs> it's probably a burglar or something. If we don't bother him, he'll, uh, he'll just take what he wants and leave. The Livingston will hate you if they get robbed. Oh, I'll just have to take that chance. How would a burglar get in the attic? Well, maybe he was here when we drove up and hid in the attic until we went to bed. And wired himself in? Oh, that's some trick. Oh, Brother Mary, I don't have all the answers. Then don't try to pretend that you do, Athena. I'm telling you there's something weird going on. What? I, I thought I heard something. What? What's that up and listen, Daddy? Gee. I suppose that's the house settling Athena. No. It sounds like someone is in the attic. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's coming this way. Are you sure you can't lock the door, Athena? Positive, Daddy. Huh? Daddy, um, those books you read... Um, what do they say about getting approached by an evil presence? Oh, what? Well, it, 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 it's not very good. Hello. Usually it means certain and untimely death by nefarious stand or painful means. <sighs> oh, I missed my can of mace. My purse downstairs. If he comes in here. Does anybody know any self-defense? I took three judo lessons. That's not going to help. Maybe if I, I could do the yells and make threatening arm motions, it'll fake him out. That's no burglar, you guys. <laughs> no. Price again, and here's the concluding act of our story. <laughs> Ever hear a burglar laugh like that? I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it in the attic. Oh, no. Now there's a man. Stop it. Stop it. I'm going to have an asthma attack. I know it. Don't you dare. I can't help it. Yes, you can. Come on. Don't quarrel. We have more important things to do. Like getting out of here. I think it's right. Well, how do we do that? Obviously, we can't go through the hall. The window. How about the window? Mm, it's a straight drop. There's nothing to climb down. Could we jump? I wouldn't unless we have to. What if we make 
a rope ladder out of bed sheets and climb down that. Great idea. I don't know how to climb down a rope. Neither do I, but we'll learn. Come on. Get the sheets off the bed. Ow! Quiet, oh, I stubbed my toe with the knot. Now we got to tie the sheets together in knots. I can't tie a knot in this with a fit of sheets. Then I'll do it. Give it to me. Hurry. Oh, help. I broke a nail. See, Athena? It's not so easy to keep quiet when you hurt yourself. It's coming back. Listen. Hurry. Got it. I got the chair caught in the knot. How can you get a chair caught in the knot? Well, you try pulling it loose and see what happens to you. Sure. Pull this. What are you doing? We ripped the sheet in two. Why? We couldn't help it. A chair got caught caught in the knot. knot. Well, tie it back together. (laughs) It's getting closer. Hurry. (laughs) It's in the hole again. (laughs) This time I found it. Found what? Nobody knows, Debbie. Gee whiz, will you be quiet? I said I found the gun. Oh, it's a gun. You guys, what if he comes after us with a gun? We just better get out of here before he does. Did you get that sheet tied back together? Sort of. What do you mean, sort of? Well, it'll do in a pinch, and this is a pinch. Okay. Mary, open the window. Debbie, help me tie the end of our rope ladder uh, to the bedpost or something. I have the gun. <laughs> Christina, I can't open this window. Let me try. Oh, oh it's stuck. Darn it. Wait a minute. Let's all three try. Oh, oh, maybe we're pushing the wrong way. No, no, let's just right. It's supposed to slide up. Uh, uh, we're, we're trapped. Trapped? Well, we can't go through the hall. I said I have the gun. <laughs> Drawers against the door. Good idea. But the here. We'll just, just have to take that chance. What if the house burns down and we can't move the chest of drawers and we burn to death and die? Oh, you do have a morbid imagination, Mary. Well, we'll just have to cross that bridge when we come to it. If you're going to move this chest of drawers, you two better help me. I'm certainly not going to do it by myself. Okay, okay, okay. Someone's opening the door. I'm not kidding. Oh, so many things are Hide. Oh. 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 I've seen that woman before. Oh, God, she's beautiful. I'll oh. tell you one thing. She's no burglar. Ever seen a see-through burglar? <laughs> Put that toy away. It's not a toy. <laughs> it's in your hands, it is. <laughs> Evelyn, please. Please, what? <laughs> gorgeous. I can't help it. He's gorgeous. He, he's so tall and graceful. Almost Lincoln ass. Well, you better not get your hopes up, Debbie. He sees through, too. I have eyes. I can see that he sees through. Please. Please. <laughs> Please. What? <laughs> Please don't leave me. Don't cry, John. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Those are ghosts. How can they be? I don't know, but they are. <laughs> I'm going to have my asthma attack now. Can't you please at least wait until we get out of here? Do you think they saw us? No. I turned the rope ladder off the guest room window and escaped. You can't. There's a cliff on that side. Oh. Then what do we do? 
Maybe we can sneak downstairs and uh, get out the side door before they see us. It's worth a try. Come on. What do we do now? Oh, let's, uh, let us try to sneak around the edge of the living room wall. Are you out of your mind, Athena? They'll see us. Maybe we're invisible to them. Don't bank on it. Well, unless you have another suggestion, Debbie, I think we should go for it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try it. Let's go. Going to throw a vase at me, John? Oh, wait. Evelyn, please. I love you. Everybody does, darling. Oh, oh you threw it. A domestic kiss. How oh, thrilling. May I tell them about it at the Time magazine interview? You have no heart. No heart. My darling, I have money. If you have money, you don't need a heart. He <laughs> got her. Now they'll never believe this story at the kitten club. Maybe we just imagined it after all. Oh, baloney, I've got a stub toe, a bump chin, you have a broken nail to prove it. Well, I'm proof. I forgot to have my asthma attack. <laughs> what was that? Oh, the doorbell. <laughs> did, did those swing go out? How should I know? Come on. Let's uh, go to the door. Yeah. It's a lady with a great day. She doesn't look see-through. Neither does that dog. I, uh, I guess I better see what they want. <laughs> uh, yes? I'm Nancy Warren. I live in that house over there. Uh, where is the living Uh, there in, uh, Tahiti. I'm a uh, house in... Is everything all right? I heard shots. Oh, you heard them too? Yes. Are you all right? Uh, we thought we'd seen ghosts. Ghosts? Yeah. A kind of ghost? A woman. Really beautiful redhead. And a man. A tall, dark, and handsome. Oh, dear God. What? Well, about this time last year, it was before your friends bought the house, of course. I heard shots in this house. And I ran up and I found my neighbor's bed. She was a redhead. And he was tall. Very tall and dark-haired. Good crazy. You probably read about it in the papers. She was the singer, Evelyn Darnell. And it was uh, her husband, John DeCosta, who managed her. It was Evelyn Darnell. I'd seen her in concert. You recognized her? I, I, I think we saw her ghost. How could that be? In this book I read, it said that people who die by murder and suicide have anguished, restless, unquenchable spirits. 
and are often compelled to relive their deaths in order to come to terms with their spiritual unfoldment or something like that. Oh, I see. No, no really. Try to listen because it's real easy to understand. Well, see, when I don't want to understand, it's too odd. I'd rather leave all these otherworldly ideas alone. Well, I'll tell you one thing, you guys. I remember hearing about it on the radio. It was in the news the day after Athena's second anniversary. The anniversary of their death is the same as Athena's kitten club anniversary. They died exactly one year ago tonight. Jiminy, then we saw them reenacting the crime on its anniversary. Whew. Uh, happy anniversary to you, Athena. Happy anniversary to all of us. At least we're still here. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guarantee or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Anniversary was written by Patricia Joyce, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Joan McCall, Denise Gaelic, and Patricia Joyce. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin and Peggy Weber. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Cable XFM St. Louis, 24 hours a day. CBS News. President Carter gets a foreign policy victory tonight in the House on the Panama Canal treaties. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS Radio Network. The House voted to reject a Republican effort that some officials said would have put an end to the treaties. It was the first closed House session in 149 years, and Mariah McLaughlin has more. Right before the House adjourned, it turned down an amendment offered by Republican George Hansen, which would have made Panama pay all the costs of the transfer of the canal. Opponents of the measure argued successfully that such a provision went beyond the treaties which had already been ratified by the Senate. Hansen, who is one of the staunchest opponents of the Panama Canal treaties, that the battle isn't over yet. They may have won the initial skirmish, but they might lose the war because I've heard many people say, well, that, that takes care of that. That uh, means I'm just going to vote against it. So they may have indeed undone themselves. But the leadership is optimistic that the battle is over and got an agreement from the opponents of the treaty that there will be a final vote by midday tomorrow. If the House approves the funding legislation, the Senate has still to act before it will become law. Mariah McLaughlin, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The U.S. State Department has condemned the murder today of ABC correspondent Bill Stewart in Managua, Nicaragua. He and his TV crew stopped at a Nicaraguan National Guard roadblock in Managua. Stewart and his interpreter walked to the barricade to talk to the National Guardsman, but the Guardsman ordered Stewart to kneel, then lie down. Stewart was holding his test credentials, but the National Guardsman kicked him while he was lying down and then shot him in the head with a rifle. Bill Stewart was 37 and had been based in New York City. About 90 foreign correspondents are covering the fighting in Nicaragua, the New York Times reporter says most feel that the Nicaraguan National Guardsmen respect their status, but Somoza's government officials are open in their hostility toward the journalist. And an editorial in Somoza's newspaper, Novadatis, today quotes government officials as saying, no correspondent who has been coming to Nicaragua in the past two years has told the truth. CBS News correspondent Richard Wagner is in Managua, and we ask him about the dangers of covering the story. We had yesterday our CBS crew uh, a good rapport we found with some National Guard with one National Guard unit, uh, we followed them into action. They uh, they did their job and they ignored us and, and let us do ours. Uh, conversely, uh, in Lyon on Monday, we got with some Sandinistas uh, who, having taken Lyon or virtually taken the city, were more than pleased to show us around and show us their accomplishment. Uh, it varies hour by hour, I'm afraid, minute by minute and unit by unit. Uh, one can find good cooperation with one unit of the Guard or the Sandinistas, and you go around the corner, as has happened to us, uh, you go around the corner and you're told, uh, if you don't turn around and start walking, you're going to be dead. CBS News correspondent Richard Wagner in Managua. FBI agents are talking to a hijacker aboard an American Airlines jet at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. The plane was on its way from New York City to Chicago about midday when a hijacker told the crew he had a bomb and demanded to be flown to Peru. He agreed to let the pilot land as scheduled in Chicago. 
After about five hours, he released all passengers and most crew members. He's said to be still holding the pilot, the co-pilot, and the flight engineer, but the pilot is refusing to take off. He says his plane will stay on the ground at O'Hare. Governor Bob Graham of Florida has ordered the National Guard to protect truckers hauling gasoline to service stations in southern Florida. Odd-even systems are in effect in the New York City metropolitan area, Connecticut, and will begin in an hour in New Jersey and parts of Washington, D.C. John Bohannon, CBS News.